In part one of this series, we explored the codec triangle and discovered the inevitable trade-off a codec faces between latency, bandwidth, and quality. Let's be clear, it takes extremely talented engineers to be able to write a codec which compresses a 12 gigabit stream into anything smaller and yet maintain a high enough quality for people to accept. However, we must also accept that this process involves significant trade-offs and in a world where we can now provide matrix switch performance using Ethernet, it boils down to one question. Why compromise? By exploring today's most commonly used codecs, this video will help you to make an informed decision about how much you are prepared to compromise your video performance. Let's set the scene. In each example, we want to distribute a 4K 444 60Hz stream which we can see has a bandwidth of around 12 gigabits per second. OK, let's start with the MJPEG 2000 codec. As you'll recall from part one, this is an intra-frame codec, so it compresses one frame at a time, giving it a typical bandwidth requirement of 600 to over 900 megabits per second. So it's fair to assume this codec was designed specifically to fit within a 1 gigabit per second environment. But how does that affect the latency and the quality? If we use the codec triangle, we can see this 12 to 1 compression means there is very little bandwidth left to adjust our latency or quality performance. So, what we see is what we get. Quality is OK. Latency performance ranges from not bad to unacceptable. And bandwidth pretty much uses up 1 gigabits per second. Nothing really wins in terms of performance. It's just, well, OK. Let's shift codecs. And this time, we'll use the H.264 codec to send our 4K444 video stream. H.264 is part of the interframe family. So rather than compress each frame, it cleverly compresses a number of frames at a time giving it an average bandwidth requirement of around 30 megabits per second, making it the perfect codec to use for wireless and mobile applications. So how does this affect the latency and quality? Back to the good old codec triangle. Pushing a 12 gigabit stream into 30 megabits per second means that H.264 has a massive compression ratio of around 500 to 1. And to achieve this requires incredibly complex algorithms, which unfortunately have a dramatic effect on the latency. However, because the bandwidth value is so low, there is plenty of headroom to trade some of the latency while maintaining quality. Here, latency and bandwidth can be adjusted within the triangle to suit the environment while maintaining a reasonably high quality image. If you're watching a Netflix movie, for example, on your mobile, it doesn't really matter how long the algorithm takes to compress the image, as long as it looks great. OK, let's shift codecs once more. And this time, let's use the SDVOE codec to once again send our 4K 444 video stream. The SDVOE codec is part of the pixel pipeline family, which means that only a few lines of each frame are compressed, resulting in a much lower compression ratio of around 1.4 to 1. This means a 12 gigabit stream will easily fit within 9 gigabits per second. But how does this affect the latency and the quality? Once again, let's apply this to the codec triangle. The bandwidth requirement is 9 gigabits per second, and thankfully, the growth of Ethernet supports this. As with 1 gigabit per second switches did 5 years ago, 10 gigabit per second switches are quickly becoming the normal accepted standard of switch. So, bandwidth isn't an issue. The 1.4 to 1 ratio means that our latency values are so low, they are non-perceptible to the human eye. So, latency isn't an issue either. And thanks to an extremely low compression ratio, with the SDVOE codec, we're left with a perfect image quality, which is mathematically lossless for most content. Identifying the correct codec for a project is important. In this video, we have explored three very different codecs, 
So before you specify a system, it's crucial you find out which type of codec it uses. Remember, video resolutions are getting bigger, Ethernet switches are getting bigger and cheaper. So the question remains, why compromise when there is simply no need to do so? Tune in each week for new course updates on the SDVOE Academy.